The Kailasa Temple is the largest of the rock-cut monolithic Hindu temple at Ellora. It represents Mount Kailasa or Kailash, the Himalayan abode of Lord Shiva. The Kailasa Temple is one of 100-odd rock-cut cave temples and monasteries at Ellora, around 30 kilometers northwest of Aurangabad in Maharashtra. Collectively called the Ellora Caves, one of the largest religious cave complexes in the world, all the caves are sculpted into a basalt cliff face and spread across a two kilometers area. However, only 34 of them are accessible to the public. These shrines and monastic complexes, which boast beautiful figures and motifs intricately carved into stone, comprise 12 Buddhist caves, 17 Hindu temples, and five Jan temples, built between 600 CE and 1000 CE. The Kailasa Temple, simply designated as Cave Number 16, is by far the most magnificent and imposing. Built by the kings of the Rashtrakuta dynasty, which ruled parts of South India between the 8th and 10th century CE. To build the temple top down, three massive trenches were first dug vertically into the basalt. Since there were no jackhammers in those times, an army of men with hammers and chisels hacked and hauled away 200,000 tons of rock. It was only after this stage that artisans set to work, slowly descending as they sculpted the individual structures in the temple complex, which include the main temple, the Shikara, the tower built over the sanctum, freestanding pillars, large statues, and individual shrines. As the artisans went lower and lower, they also added the mind-boggling sculptural details on the exterior and interior surfaces of these structures. But why build vertically, from the top down? Why not build it horizontally, starting with the façade, which is how most monuments are built? The closest we come to an explanation is a legend in the 10th century, Katha Kalpa Taru which refers to an 8th century queen of the Rashtrakuta ruler, Elu. According to the legend, the king took ill and his queen prayed for a cure. If her wish was granted, she promised to abstain from eating till a magnificent temple was built for Lord Shiva and she saw its shikara, top. Her prayer was granted and the king invited the best architects in the land to submit their plans to construct a grand temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. The architects came up with blueprints for elaborate temples, and the king was impressed. But there was just one hitch. It would take months to execute any of these plans, and that would mean his queen would starve before the temple was completed. Finally, an architect named Kokasa from Python came up with an ingenious plan he suggested that the temple be carved from top to bottom. They could therefore start by sculpting the Shikara and the queen, on seeing the top of the tower, could break her fast within a few days. Most of the temple's construction is attributed to 8th century Rashtrakuta king Krishna I. The Kailasa temple has features of Dravidian architecture or South Indian temple style architecture, as there were Chalukyan and Pallava artisans involved in its construction. The Kailasa temple appears to have been built in stages. Scholars believe that Krishna, 1757 until 773 CE, built the major portions of the temple, the central temple, the Nandi shrine, and the gateway. But it is possible that construction had begun under his predecessor, his uncle and founder of the Rashtrakutas, Dantidurga, 735 until 757 CE, as cave number 15, or the Dashavatara cave nearby, bears an inscription from him. Besides, its reliefs feature the same style as those in the Kailasa temple. Some parts of the temple complex have been dated to later rulers. The vertical excavation is evident as soon set eyes on the monument. A two-story gateway opens to reveal a U-shaped courtyard. Most of the deities left of the entrance are Shaivite, while the deities to the right are Vaishnavites. Facing the entrance is a panel of Gajalakshmi, seated on a full-bloomed lotus in the midst of a lotus pond, while the elephants above pour water by a ritual adoration. Kailash Temple is considered as one of the most remarkable cave temples in India, due to its massive size, architecture, and sculptural treatment. 
about 145 feet wide, 195 feet long, and 90 feet high, Kailash Temple covers an area twice the size of the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. With its gigantic, sculpted, monolithic main shrine in the center, Gopura and enclosure walls on both sides, the Kailash Temple is one of the largest structures in India and in the world, rivaling even the Taj Mahal in Agra. Through intricate sculptures and carvings, every section of the complex tells stories from mythology, depicting different Puranic episodes. There are also panels comprising seven rows each, depicting scenes from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. One of the most elaborate sculptures is that of Ravana shaking Mount Kailash. The Kailasa Temple at Ellora is considered a high point in rock-cut architecture in the subcontinent. Stand beneath the curtains of stone that cascade from the cliff above and imagine scores of artisans chiseling away at the rock with every tap of the hammer giving shape to the marvel that meets gaze in a magnificent fusion of man and nature. The unconventional approach to its construction is what sets the temple apart from other ancient rock structures. Instead of following the traditional bottom-to-top method, the artisans crafted this masterpiece from top to bottom. With nothing more than basic tools like chisels and hammers, they meticulously carved the rock, showcasing the exceptional artistry reminiscent of that era. It is also interesting to note that the laborers tirelessly constructed the temple without any scaffolding. The archaeologists had calculated that it would have taken more than a hundred years to finish the temple construction. However, in reality, it took only 18 years to complete it. Interestingly, modern age engineers find it impossible to finish the same temple using the modern technology in 18 years. Yet another among the long list of Kailasa Temple's history and facts is the effort to destroy it. In the year 1682, Mughal King Aurangzeb, who destroyed thousands of Hindu temples, sent 1,000 people to destroy Kailasa Temple. They worked for three years, but they could break and disfigure a few statues only. Aurangzeb finally gave up on this task, and realizing that it was impossible to completely destroy the temple, as the rock was simply too hard to demolish. Even though artisans used only hammers, chisels and picks to construct it. M.K. Davalikar, a famous Indian historian and a respected archaeologist, suggests that the Kailasa Temple has been built and sculpted over a long period by different people at a different time, like other ancient buildings. He claims that there are several phases in which the temple complex was constructed and finally given an appearance that we witness today. One of the pieces of evidence that historians use to date the structure is an inscription on a perforated window in the west wall of one of the caves in which we find a half-finished Sanskrit engraving carved using Brahmi script. It does give the genealogy of the Rashtrakuta dynasty, but all this only proves that the cave was there in the 8th century, not that it was created at that time. Many of the inscriptions in this region have been battered badly over time, due to weathering, and there are no documented claims to its creation like the Great Pyramid of Egypt, which does not reveal the identity of the builder. The Kailasa Temple does not reveal the identity of its creator either. Whatever the true history is, the resulting Kailasa Temple is a magnificent work of art, worthy of a tribute to the gods. We know that the Kailasa Temple is only one of several sculpted ancient caves and temples in this area, but it is worth noting that there are also several sculpted ruins in the vicinity that are submerged under the water, and these may date back to the last ice age when sea level was 100 meters below. Those ruins are outlined in the fantastic book Underworld by Graham Hancock. The temple was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 as part of the Ellora Caves Complex.